Welcome to Gather Geeks, a podcast by BizBash, the place where people passionate about meetings and events come together. This episode is a Gather Geeks special sponsor edition. Here's your host, BizBash chairman and founder, David Adler. Welcome to another special edition of Gather Geeks by BizBash. Our topic today is a better video conferencing platform called BlueJeans by Verizon, the video webinar service that is specifically designed with event organizers of all types in mind. We are speaking to their chief marketing officer, John Knightley, and their director of global field marketing and events, Amanda Seeger. Let's take a listen. Oh, hi, John. Welcome to Gather Geeks. Thank you, David. Great to be here. And Amanda? Hi, David. Welcome. Nice to meet you. You guys are both coming in from San Francisco, and I'm here at my HQ in D.C., and uh, this is the way we're communicating today. We're communicating without seeing people, necessarily, or, or actually, we're hearing people, we're looking at people, but we're not touching people. So, John, why don't you tell us, what are you guys doing? You are like in the sweet spot of the world when it comes to how people connect and collaborate. David, it's been a wild time, right? As we've all uh, been changing how we work and changing how we, our kids go to school and changing how we even socialized. We were there to be able to help people over video conferencing, right? So Blue Jeans has been around for a while. We've been really at this whole video conferencing game and also really helping people deliver great virtual events and webinars. So it's been there's been a huge surge in our business and lots of opportunities to help people do all kinds of things that we never thought the technology could do. So there's like an adjective now of what you guys are. Oh. We have a competitor of yours is also That's very right. well known, That's but right. you guys are the one that, is, that are the contenders. You guys are the ones that are the different new experience. That's right. When you get tired of using the other one, there's blue jeans and it's a great experience as well. It's fun to be the challenger brand uh, in this case. And tell us a little bit about, we know what the other guy does and what you guys do on your video conferencing. Mm -hmm. Tell us what makes your platform so unique, and especially as you get into the event side. And how you defined events is also an interesting Sure. Topic. And it's very timely right now because every everyone who was r running a physical event is now thinking about what's the right platform for my virtual event, right? How do I take that physical event virtual? And so BlueJeans Events was built to really create a high-fidelity, engaging video experience that could scale up to you know 50,000 attendees and even more if you use a social media platform to, to stream it onto. And what really differentiates it is it's built for that high production value event. And we started off with large internal town hall meetings where you might, in the old days, you might have a, a film crew that would come in and bring all the AV tech and then the CEO would stand up and they'd address the audience in the, in the auditorium. In a big company, you might have uh, people spread all over the world. And so we enable them to take that experience in over video, make it immersive, make it interactive so that employees in another country or another office can raise their hands and ask questions on video. After the keynote, if you will, they can have a Q&A, a live town hall where people can ask questions and everyone can be seen and heard. And so it makes that experience much more immersive than just a one-way broadcast. And so we started off there and lo and behold, now that we're in COVID and everything, those capabilities that we brought to bear around the production value, the ability to moderate and everything are gold for someone who's trying to create a virtual webinar or event or training or press conference or whatever. And so Amanda, you have come, you've been the event person for this company, for this you know, behemoth company that's, that's becoming part of the popular culture. And they came to you to help contribute to this event product. How did you, we always say that the people that know events may not know technology, the people that know technology may know events, but it seems like you have the perfect combination there. What did you add to the product when you first saw it that said, oh my God, we got to do this? <laughs> I appreciate that, David. I've been lucky enough to work in tech and as a marketer and an event planner for uh, many years now. So I was able to take that unique lens when I joined BlueJeans and really dive in and understand you know, how the product works from a backend perspective. What really do we need to do to optimize it for 
the, the event planners and the marketers who don't use this. And one of the things that I found that was really important was the integration with other products. So especially from a marketing side, we're big on lead generation and how are we going to engage our customers and how do we make sure that we're not blasting them with emails and giving them the best optimized experience. And at the time, there weren't a lot of products that did that as well as BlueJeans did. And we still had a little bit of work to do. So the engineering team and the product marketing team was uh, nice enough to take my suggestions and they made some minor and some pretty major tweaks uh, to optimize that experience for all of our prospects and customers to make sure that they have a really seamless, streamlined experience using the product. Can you give us the event perspective, the event planner, the event organizer perspective on how you describe what this product is? And then I'll ask John to figure out how to how he you know uh, sells those bells and whistles that makes you you know want to listen to this and go right to the place where you can test this out. Yeah, I think there's a lot of different products out there, and especially when you're looking at a virtual events technology product. There's everything from live stream broadcasting to the immersive avatar experience where you have sponsors and booths. And then you have webinar products, which are really just made for the one to many conversation. And Blue Jeans was between that um, live broadcasting and webinar uh, situation there. And what we did was we were able to take that high production value which you normally get with a production team. So a lot of event planners would usually use some kind of AV and IT and in-house production when you're um, doing these like huge keynotes and live stream. And now we're doing that in, in, in my bedroom, right? <laughs> so we're doing webinars, we're doing live events and, and we don't have that production team to help us. How do we marry those two together? And that's what Blue Jeans has really been able to do is take that really high production experience where normally you wouldn't, as a marketer or an event planner, know how to do that, but simplify it so that it's easy for me uh, as the person executing, but then also easy for the end user to be able to interact, engage, and really make the most and, and be able to listen to and, and absorb what's being said instead of trying to figure out how to just join a meeting or mute myself or not be on camera. Right. Okay. So how do you explain what you do in this to your mother? You say how this is so different and so cool to your mother, who is probably doesn't have a clue about what you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> so I would say, think about if you're watching TV and you were watching the Emmys or something like that, and you wanted to be able to log on and actually be able to ask the people on stage questions or raise your hand or even chat or engage with other people who are also watching the Emmys. That's what Blue Jeans can do from an event perspective. And you've made it more streamlined. What are some of the engagement tactics that you guys have come up with that have made it so cool that people will say, oh my God, I got to do that? I don't know. Whoever wants to take that job. Yeah, well, or, I can, I can jump Amanda. in. First of all, just like you know, any marketer needs to know their audience, one of the things that the product team did really was they said there's really three roles when we think about an event. There's the attendee, and we want their experience to be super easy. They just get in through a browser. They don't have to download anything. They can ask questions. They can respond to polls. They can even raise their hand to be promoted if they want to be on video to ask a question, as Amanda said. So that's one role, the attendee. The, other, the next role is a presenter. And what you want to do for the presenter is make it dirt simple for them to be on a panel or be a keynoter and present their ideas and be on video and not clutter their screen with too much. Yes, there's moderator chat or they can see the Q&A or, or this, the, the, the polls, but keep them focused on the presenting. But the third role, and this is where we really differentiate versus some of the other competitors who, who shall not be named on this call, is, is really the moderator role. And that's the role that gives you all that control to make that engaging experience. So I can, if I'm a moderator and we're all sitting and you're, you're my panelists, I can decide, hey, I'm going to zoom in on David right now. He's making a really good point. And so the audience is going to see that zoomed in view of David. And now I'm going to pull back and we're going to see all panelists on the screen. And now we're going to go over and look at Amanda because she's talking about what the event planners are, are thinking about. And so that amount of control 
I'm now I'm gonna now I'm gonna upload and I'm gonna play the video that I've uploaded. Now I'm gonna put a poll in. Now I'm gonna answer a question in Q and A, or I'm gonna p post it over to one of the presenters. That sort of production level control is what really differentiates BlueJeans and, and makes it more engaging. And then we have all the bells and whistles that you would normally expect, right? The polling, the Q and A, the chat, the hand raising, those kinds of things. So it, you're talking my language now, because as many people who listen to this know that I believe that event organizers have to be collaboration artists mm -hmm. and that it's no longer, you're no longer just sitting there making sure that the, that you have enough, you know, liquor to serve and things like that. It's, and that does lubricate people right. a little bit, right. but the key is that facilitator or that moderator that mm -hmm. knows how to work the room. Right. Have you ever been in a room where you that person that knows how to work the whiteboard and gets everybody participating, right. doing your system controls and things like that? To me, that's the new art of what our business is about. And David, you raise a really good point. So a lot of the platforms out there have things like polling, but how do you employ polls, for example, to get a higher level of engagement? One of the things that I think is really cool is, is to start off with a poll to take someone's temperature. If, if you're going to try to persuade your audience on some key points, whether it's about my product's great or whether it's some other topic that you're trying to persuade them on, why not launch a poll at the beginning and then bring that same poll back at the end and see if you move the audience at all? Another great thing is let's get some questions started before we even launch in and see what's on the audience's mind and how can we take what's on their mind and weave that into the panel or the keynote so they're more on the edge of their seat. Amanda, what do you think? How did these kind of techniques resonate with the event planning world that you're dealing with in terms of the product? Because you've got both hats. You've got the event side, the marketing side, and the product side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think what's awesome about this product <laughs> is that it allows you to utilize these features to really evoke emotion in people. And, and as a planner and as someone who's producing live events, I think that's one of the things that really drives me personally is having that emotional connection and the technology is there to help you do that. So whether it's uploading a video, so something like a tear jerking commercial, which gets people uh, a little bit more open and, and vulnerable to asking everyone to put their video on and just show me what you're working with right now. And having a live DJ, I was on an event that had that going and it just was a nice break. They didn't ask anyone to dance, but there was all these different artistic forms to get people to engage and thinking outside the box or pose the hard questions and, and um, ask people to engage in chat and have somebody, uh, like you said, creating and it, it, it is an art, getting people to engage with you over That's chat. Right. Yeah. All of these bells and whistles and features allow you to take that live experience and make it virtual. And in some cases, you are engaging more than you ever would have in person. Because but it does take it, but it doesn't it does take that moderator. I think you're 100 percent. You're empowering the collaboration artist in many cases, in my opinion. And that can the question I would have is, can I be flexible on the fly? Can I do something that says, oh, my God, I, that I didn't plan on doing a poll, but I got to do a poll because I just thought of something really cool. Mm -hmm. Is that doable yet? Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Ask a poll or take a poll and ask people, is this resonating or do we need to shift the conversation? And you can get sentiment, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, what other what are the things do you have in the pipeline for engagement that that a, a moderator or a collaboration artist or an event organizer will get excited about? Because I think it's all aspirational too. Because we're still learning this medium. Sure, there's more and more we can do also with the visuals. For example, not just presenting a PowerPoint or whatever, but there's the weatherman view, right? I'm I have the PowerPoint behind me and I can point to things or what can happen across the lower third of the screen. For example, maybe I'm talking, but there's interesting uh, engagement messages coming across the bottom uh, of the screen while we're asking, including maybe it's chat questions. What's the audience doing? How cool is that to be able to see what people, what's on people's minds? So there's a lot of things we can do to bring that engagement or social. What, what are people tweeting about while we're in the middle of the event? Actually, Amanda jogged my memory. So I was on a, it was a women's empowerment conference that we did on a Saturday 
And we've donated our software for that. And the creator of the conference, I thought was super creative and, and had some great speakers and panelists. But in the middle, she's, we're going to take a break now. And I've got this Zumba teacher who's going to get up and I want everyone to stand up. And of course, we couldn't see the audience standing up necessarily, but the Zumba teacher was totally on fire with awesome music. And here we are on a Saturday kind of doing, well, I was joking, I was busting moves and my kids were over here completely flabbergasted and embarrassed that I would do something like that. But anyway, it's a great way to to get people engaged. And as, as Amanda said, there's a lot of creative things you can do beyond the boring one person to many kind of monologue. So how do you become a power user? Uh, one thing that I'm excited, you're making me think, I mean, I want to really know how to use that. How cool it is when you actually know how to use a software program mm -hmm. and and really get the most out of it. How yeah. is that person, who is that person that, and how do you suggest they become a power user? Because it, it could enhance their career big time. You know what? You're hitting on another thing. So a former summer intern that I worked with many years ago contacted me and he has a program to help kids in underprivileged parts of different cities learn about technology that they might be able to use in their careers. And to me, this was the perfect one. Like it's, you don't need a PhD to learn it, but you but there are skills that you can learn. And if you learn this, you have a marketable skill to take, either create your own company and be a solo shop or go work for a big company where you're producing their town halls and their webinars and things like that. So I actually think it's a great entree into technology and, and communications and things like that. I don't know, Amanda, if what you have to say. There's also the marketing side of it as well, not just the production side. Yeah, I, I agree. Mm hmm I mean, it sounds like this is like an entrepreneurial dream to be able to, because this is what everyone's asking for. But mm -hmm. one of the things that everyone we're finding, I just uh, mentioned uh, to you guys in our pre-call that I did an analysis of the top 10 or 15 stories we put on BizBash. And all of them were about increasing engagement in virtual. And that this product seems to have what people are looking for in terms of new ways of connecting and being that collaboration artist. Mm -hmm. And I hope that term sticks with maybe you create a user group that teaches people <laughs> how to do this because it really is important to know how to use all the bells and whistles. We know how to use a, a pen. <laughs> right. You could be an incredible writer or you could be an awful writer. <laughs> and we're in that moment in time too when everyone's, or a lot of us anyway, are, are still working at home. and But we're going to come out of this hopefully, and we'll, we'll be able to be back in the physical world. But the beauty of this kind of, of experience is that you can reach a much wider array of people all over the world. And we think it's going to continue to be something people are just going to want to do. And, and now's the time that people are learning it because they have to, but it'll live on. And so there's only more to, to do and learn. And I like your idea. Let's say that we want to have a 50,000 person mm -hmm. meeting. What does that look like? How do you make it so it's not crazy? What is the way you approach a meeting of 50,000 people? Mm -hmm. It's daunting, but you, it seems like you can do it theoretically or re Absolutely. reality in mm -hmm. reality. But what does it look like from the moderator point of view? How does he be the orchestra leader for 50,000 people? Sure. I can ju jump in or Amanda, yes. if you have some thoughts. Whoever wants to. <laughs> I, I can just give one example and then maybe John, you can, mm -hmm. can chime in. We have a customer who is a retail shop and they actually launched a new product line during COVID and they did this all over video. And now that the product is ready to be launched, they're planning for a launch party. And how do you do that virtually? So one thought was we're working with them on, on what this is going to look like, but perhaps it's an invite only exclusive discussion with the owners and the launch on BlueJeans. So the moderators are technically the owners and they will facilitate the conversation with their influencers and um, partners and that kind of thing. But then there's integration with uh, Facebook Live and they can stream this on their Facebook page as an advertisement and you can get up to that 50,000 person event. And if they want to engage, they can, but really it's the exclusivity of the people on the Blue Jeans event itself um, that makes it really unique and interesting. 
And if you don't want to engage, then you don't have to. You can just listen. So that would be one example of something cool to marry the two together. And you, David, you have the control. If you're planning a 50,000 person event, you you can decide how much risk do I want to take with that? Do I want to have attendees in view only mode? Do I want to let them have community chat open so everyone can see? Do I want the Q&A to be open or does it go straight to the moderator? So you have the knobs and dials to determine how open or how controlled do I want the event to be? In some cases, hey, see, I, our CEO won't be on the call, so I'm going to make it open and I'll t- take those tough questions. Or, hey, this is our, let's, let's say this is an investor relations conference. We don't want like weird chatter coming in from the audience, so we're going to turn those community features off and we're going to have it be fully moderated experience with no kind of visible audience chiming in there. So you have the all those dials that you can set depending on the level of interactivity and the level of openness you want to have in that event. And is it, I guess there's not much difference between 10,000 people and 50,000 people ultimately. It's the scalability of the platform. Yeah, and a lot yeah, of the platforms yeah. won't scale to that level. One of the technical pieces that I'll just mention is when we are in offices, a, t- a typical streaming solution can suck up a lot of bandwidth on your corporate networks. And so we have optimized for those networks so that it doesn't, it, you don't have that network effect of, hey, the CEO is doing a town hall and the network isn't working for anybody else. We've optimized for that experience so that you can have those big things. And the other is we also let you watch it, not just on your browser or mobile, but also in a conference room system. So when you're back to the office, you can have teams or if you're uh, broadcasting to a school, for example, all the classrooms could be seeing them in there together versus everyone having to look at it on a screen. And that also increases the interactivity of it because you can go to room and they can you can promote a room and they can be seen and then they can interact. We did that one time with Sundance Film Festival where we had a group of students and there was a documentary about these high school students and they were on stage at Sundance and then there was a class of students invited to interact with them. They were all in a com- conference room and they were able to see each other and, and, and ask questions of the people who were in the documentary. So you can do some all kinds that's, of creative, immersive things with the That's with the very, very, very yeah. interesting. I wrote a piece in the beginning of COVID called that. We, I think that the future of events are going to be a hub and spoke method so that you'll be able to get thousands of people and they don't have to all go to San Francisco for a dream force necessarily. In right. one swoop, but you can have the same people around the world. And the whole goal with events is to create intimacy at scale. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I think that you do with this system that you're just describing is that you get people in the room and they're intimate and they're able to have an experience different than the entire group, but it's very valuable to do. It's very valuable. The networking can happen in real time and the information can come in from around the world. So once again, the orchestra leading of this becomes a very crucial method and the moderator, facilitator, organizer has to know how to do it properly. And, and, And it sounds like the quality issues we don't have to worry about with Blue Jean. A lot of times it's, oh, this didn't work or that didn't work. Mm-hmm. But I just did a I just did a hybrid event last week and I was great on my virtual platform. But it, nobody could hear me in the room. Oh, no. So the people <laughs> did not know how to connect. So there's a lot of issues that have still not worked out yet, I think, that it seems like a Blue Jean concept will help that. And of course, we also feature things like the ability to dial in too, if you need to use the old fashioned way and get in on the phone. So if for some reason you're in a place where your audio is not working, you can use the old fashioned way and and dial in too. Let me throw out a couple of event types out at you and you can give us sort of a way that you can use um, this. If you wanted to do like the world's largest brainstormer, can you do that? Do you, do you envision that happening with this in a, in a simple way? We have a customer, and I can't mention their names, but they're in the, I guess I would call it toy business, or yeah, toy is probably the closest I can get to it. And they use the platform for these brainstorming type scenarios where they'll have different groups showing their latest creations to other groups. And they go beyond that. They go into things like, let's do musicals, let's have contests, let's do other things. So they really get into this creative vein of, it's not a it's not a presentation, it's a discussion and it's an engagement 
across different teams, sharing what they're creating, what they're working on, and then having some fun together to keep the spirit up, if you will. How about the data that you get in judging? Can other people judge what's on there in real time in some form, or is it a polling methodology? Right now it's polling, but I, I could imagine you could use social or other things to, to do that. Yeah. It seems like you know, this is, we're still in the beginning of this. We are. This we're is, learning a lot. We're all learning a lot. Mm -hmm. How about how about the ultimate shopping experience? Have you been able to do, assume that retailers, you talked about ideas, mm -hmm. but can people buy online yet? Or will that come in these kind of systems? So you, you mean can, like you have your personal shopper who's showing you things and then you're picking what you want? You can, that, you can buy, will you be able to buy via the, the, a, a blue jean platform where somebody will have a meeting and they'll show you a product and everybody can say, oh, I want that. And they click the hey, button. And uh, I'm writing down these ideas, David, because I, I, I've got to, uh, don't tell anyone, don't have anyone listen to I won't this podcast. Tell I, want to, I want to go monetize that idea. <laughs> but it's what event people are thinking that's happening all the time. Right. There's a lot of, there's a lot of people that are using direct to consumer mm -hmm. events as a direct to consumer vehicle where people are buying it's no different than the shopping network when you think about it but having people say is that a good product or not would be also interesting that's another use case mm -hmm. uh, I, I would assume this the, the huge shareholder meeting is going to be able to be happening on this in some form that's a different way of facilitating yep. sure or, or, or a, been on virtual press conferences already on it another use case is hackathons right uh, we have clients that are using it for hackathons you can bring people no matter where they are teams of coders together you launch the challenge they can keep their little their little video windows up if, as they're coding if if you want or you bring them back when they're ready or, or whatever it is that's really interesting who would have thought we had no idea that it, we have people using it for that. And then all of a sudden they pop up and that's really cool. Is e-gaming happen on the, happening on these platforms now? Or is it where, where uh, you're gaming together as people and you're, you have gaming you have, or you're watching what's happening. I would assume that's happening. I would these, assume, but I don't yeah. know for sure. Yep. Yep. So Amanda, what are you hearing in terms of unique ways people are using the product? Yeah. John gave some great examples. I think festivals are another one. We just had a customer do a Juneteenth event and going back to that live music and streaming for a couple hours, they were able to connect, I think it was 20,000 people across 23 countries using Blue Jeans. And again, it was that Facebook integration to help reach a larger audience, but the possibilities are endless. It's, a, it's crazy. It's so exciting. I'm getting goosebumps just hearing about this because I'm a totally technology geek. <laughs> and when you combine it with being a collaboration artist, to me, this is the crux of this. Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. So we've heard it, another interesting use case used in, in higher education. So one, one prestigious East Coast university was connecting their students to archaeologists out in, on digs in different parts of the world so they could see what was going on the dig and then ask, and then ask the archaeologists questions about what they're seeing and what their pr process was. So again, you can start to imagine, again, this virtual learning has a ton of opportunities as well to just transform the way we engage and learn. And it breaks down the barriers. I, I can connect you to the smartest person on a, a topic and then I'll allow you to ask that person questions. How cool is that? So let's move on to, we talked earlier about how this event organizer who wants to practice in your system and use BlueJean as their sort of key technology that they learn. What advice do you give? Do they sign, can they sign on individually and take it or does it have to be the organization signing on? How do you get access to the event platform? Uh, who wants to get taken? Yeah, I, I can take that. And you can uh, start with a free trial. So you can try it for free and see how you like it. Usually we do a relatively small event to practice just to trial the bells and whistles. Uh, we have a lot of online sort of training materials as well. And then you can decide if you, let's say you're a solo person, you want to just have your own event business, you can swipe a credit card on e-commerce and buy package, or you can scale up if you're part of an organization and usually start with a use case and use it there. And then if you like it, you can scale it into other areas. But is there a difference between, we talked earlier about the event piece. Is that an event? The event one is different than the regular mass using one right now. Then the different, yeah, it's different than yeah. just the meetings, video the meeting platform. platform. And that's and all because events we think have different requirements, right? If you want to have a yeah. great high production event, right? 
Yep. Uh, are you, do you have any? Is there anything in the pipeline about helping to manage the event itself from the pre-event and the invitation side and things like that? The normal registration pieces that you would have to integrate in. We do a lot there, and I'll, I'll let Amanda cover it because she okay. she works with that piece. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And most people don't want to go near that if they're not event people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And and we do have integrations with uh, webinar and uh, CRM systems like Arketo, for example. And then we have integrations with companies like Splash and e-ticketing. So if someone wants to sell tickets to an event, they can plug that in to their Blue Jeans events. And the API piece and actually connecting it does take someone who knows a little bit more about the technology side, but uh, we have a great support team and, and tons of resources to help people through that process, as well as multitude of videos. So if you're brand new to technology, just go to our support page and uh, it'll walk you through from step one, how to connect, how to set up your invitations, how to customize. So we have a lot of uh, branding optimizations available. So uh, you can really make it your own. And whether you're a technology soar or you're brand new, uh, you'll be able to figure it out. By the so end. the last the last question I have is everyone thinks that the event industry is a monolith and there's a gazillion different sort of sectors to it. So I just want to make sure that in the philanthropy and fundraising side, this use cases work really well for this. In the trade show and exhibit side, it probably works really well for this. In the uh, corporate event game, it sounds like it's perfect. In the uh, marketing and activation game, it looks like you can play the game. In the festival side, it works. In the concert side, it works. In the in the alumni affairs and mm -hmm. those kinds of things, it seems like it works. It works in every sector. And everybody has their own nuances because everyone says, oh, it's not like my sector. But it sounds like this does have use cases for everything. So I'd encourage everyone to... Test, take the trial. That's the first thing I'm going to do right after I'm done with this, actually, because I'm really excited about doing something a little different, too. And that's to add more power because I know it could be better at mm -hmm. these things. Mm -hmm. Any final comments, John or Amanda? No, we're just appreciate the opportunity to be on the podcast. And if anyone has questions, you can always reach us, john.nightly at Blue Jeans. And Amanda, I don't know if you want to offer yours. <laughs> yeah, Amanda at Blue Jeans. It's easy. Or just and come the, to bluejeans.com, right? Bluejeans.com. And, and we can go ahead and your careers could change dramatically based on what <laughs> I'm right. hearing. So that's fantastic. Right. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thanks for listening to today's episode. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or your favorite podcast app. We can be found on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Player FM, Google Play, and Pocket Cast. Be sure to leave us a rating and review. It helps others discover the Gather Geeks podcast. We'd also love to hear from you. You can leave feedback on Twitter at GatherGeeks or leave us an email, gathergeeks at bizbash.com. We hope you join us again for the next episode of Gather Geeks. Until then, gather on.